Amigos, ¿qué tal? ¿Cómo estáis? Bienvenidos a un nuevo vídeo más aquí en el canal de Rainbow Six. Un vídeo un tanto especial porque como bien estáis viendo en pantalla, amigos y amigas, estamos viendo en directo el canal de Rainbow Six ahora mismo, eh, después del anuncio que como bien habréis entrado muchos de vosotros, pues bueno, eh, se jugarán, eh, bueno, se jugarán, no, se jugará la final de este Siege Invitational, creo que es, la verdad que estoy ultra desconectado, pero la cosa es que estoy viendo esto en directo en Twitch, amigos y amigas, para reaccionar con vosotros al futuro de este próximo año de Rainbow Six en cuestión de 5 minutos, por eso quería hacer la introducción un poquito antes, vamos a ver todo el contenido que se viene a R6, aparte de esta temporada que tuvisteis en el día de ayer presentada ya, pues vamos a ver todo el contenido que se viene en esta futura temporada 2, en esta futura temporada 3 y en esta futura temporada 4 de este año 9. Lo primero que todo, dejar un like, una suscripción si os gusta este vídeo. Dependiendo de eh, cómo me encuentre, si tengo ganas o no, eh, subiré más cosas, eh, dividiéndolas en el día de hoy, todo lo que veamos a continuación. Si no, pues me iré a jugar al CS y mañana y a lo largo de la semana pues iréis teniendo todo el contenido que se viene eh, a este año 9 que vamos, que vamos a ver en este vídeo, pero más individualmente comentándolo poco a poco. Y poquito más, la verdad, dejadme aquí abajo en los comentarios cómo lo veis vosotros, cómo veis el futuro de este juego, deciros de que no sabemos los creadores de contenido nadie, absolutamente nada, Ubisoft este año no ha querido invitar ni dar ningún tipo de privilegio para los creadores de contenido eh, pues bueno que sepan antes eh, lo que se viene en el día de hoy por el hecho de que no querían que se filtrase nada. Adivinar lo que ha pasado. Efectivamente, se ha filtrado eh, de igual forma, de igual manera, no sé cómo, pero en Twitter literalmente está todo lo que eh, va, eh, vamos a ver a continuación. Así que, bueno, yo tengo que decir que ya lo he visto y por eso os digo que quiero que abajo en los comentarios me dejéis vuestro punto de vista, vuestra opinión y me digáis qué pensáis, qué opináis sobre el futuro que, que nos espera o que le espera a este juego en este año 9. Son y 57, son las 6 y 57, a las 7 hacen el anuncio, así que pues ya toca esperar. Este vídeo se va a subir íntegro, sin ningún tipo de corte eh, al canal, para que tengáis el vídeo al completo y en este caso, pues a la gente que le guste ver los vídeos largos, pues bueno tengáis todo el contenido que se ven a R6 en un vídeo de, no sé, la presentación durará poquito, en verdad 20 minutos aproximadamente, están gritando es que es muy loco, porque estas finales se están jugando en Sao Paulo en, Sao Pablo, en Brasil y los dos equipos que han llegado a la final son W7M, que nosotros lo conocemos, o yo lo conozco por el equipo que jugó contra Koi en su día, en ese Siege Invitational que nos vimos todos los partidos de Koi, y obviamente Face, o sea que es una final en, bueno, en Brasil contra, o con dos, mejor dicho, equipos brasileños, así que es una locura la verdad, se ha dado todo increíble o sea, están en Brasil y los dos equipos que están en la final son de Brasil yo me parto los cojones pero bueno, eh, nosotros a lo que vamos, a lo importante al contenido que se viene a R6 próximamente, tengo que decir que ya lo he visto, como os he comentado antes y la verdad que, bueno ahora juzgaréis vosotros mismos sobre lo que se viene pero, pero cuidado 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 porque eh, puede ser un año puede ser un año difícil, puede ser un año difícil, más difícil del año del que venimos y más complicado del año en el que estamos. Porque os recuerdo que la temporada 1 todavía no ha salido para todas las plataformas. Mañana sale el técnico del Tesebre para la gente que quiera probar la primera temporada de este año 9 y el día, eh, estoy tirando de memoria, 12 de marzo creo que sale Deathly Omen. Así que, eh, cuidado con esto. Estoy, me, me quedo callado porque quiero ver si dan paso ya. No, están haciendo tiempo. Están haciendo tiempo. Tengo que decir que me, me acabo de levantar. Me, me he pegado... Me he pegado una siesta de unos 30 minutos. Me he levantado solo para este momento. ¿Vale? 
Avenue. <risa> ¡Qué locura, eh! Feis que lleva 800.000 años aquí en Enero 6 y W79 que... 79, sí, efectivamente lo he dicho bien. Mira, aquí lo tenemos. Vamos allá. Venga, va. Revelación del año nuevo, amigos. Un minuto restante. Compartir con vuestros amigos este vídeo para la gente que le interese, para la gente que le importe este juego todavía. Y vamos a dar de caña. Yo no voy a comentar mucho por encima. Me voy a estar callado y lo que vaya entendiendo, porque está todo en inglés, lo iremos comentando. ¿Vale? Yo creo que entenderéis todo sin yo decir eh, mucho. ¿Vale? Pero bueno, vamos a echarle un vistazo. Amigos, venga, va. Vamos allá. 30 segundos. Vamos al lío. Supongo que empezarán con el roadmap este típico. Donde nos enseñan, pues bueno, todo el contenido ya directamente. Así que ahí lo tendréis. Venga, 15 segundos, ¿eh? Lo tenemos, chavales. Vamos allá. 6, 5, 4, 9. Vamos al lío, chavales. Año 9. Vamos. Ahora, ahora, ahora me salta un puto anuncio, ¿te imaginas? Bueno, bienvenidos. Año 9, cuidado, ¿eh? Qué locura, ¿eh? ¡Qué grande, mi tío Alfonso! ¡Dios! Dos míticos. La madre que los parió. Increíble. Son dos míticos. Alex. ¡Qué grande, Alex! I just want to say, obrigado Brasil. <laughs> We asked you to show up for the SI and you did. This is unbelievable and I can't wait to talk about your nine. I can't wait either, but first, Joshua. Joshua. Qué grande es mi colega Joshua. What does this moment mean for you? Oh, in one word, everything. This is our moment, not just our teams, but all of our fans. And the pros, like this is what it's all about. Coming together and celebrating everything that is amazing about Siege. And can't be oh man, we gotta get into this stuff. I'm getting too too antsy already. I know, this is the community, and this is for the community. So let's get into the overall vision of Vamos allá. El Overall. Overall vision. El panel este que os he comentado, el dibujo. So what is the Siege team focusing on in your nine? In your nine, we're focusing on you. Your feedback. It's the foundation of our Eso es lo que We're going to see significant quality of life changes and, of course, meta shifts that are incredible. That's going to keep the game fresh and fun. All right, Alex, we have the fresh and fun, but how is it going to be fair? Right. Siege is a competitive game, and making sure that we maintain that integrity is really important to us. So anti-cheat will be a main topic for us all through year nine. Also... Players have invested a lot of time into a game like Siege, and we want to be able to celebrate that. So expect, season after season, more rewards and celebration for all of your progression in the game. All right. Bueno, that, no he tenido ni puta idea de lo que ha dicho. The overview of the seasons in operators. How about you? What do you think? Ready? Let's get into the overview of the seasons in operators. Vale, vamos allá. So I'm going to drop a spoiler here if you missed it. Season 1, Deimos. You can now be the villain we all need. A ver, un spoiler no es, amigo. All right, if you missed it yesterday, please tune in. We talked about Deimos coming into the game. Bueno, van a hablar un poco la primera temporada. By Rainbow, but you can now actually jump into the villain's boots. Play with the death marks. And as Justin said yesterday, take down operators. El trailer mola mucho. Demos mola mucho. El diseño está muy guapo. It's really exciting that we're able to go into this realm of. Esa pistola va a ser una locura. Su habilidad. I love it. Now let's get into territory that we haven't seen yet. Season two. 
Vamos allá. Temporados. Right. Season 2 is when we shake things up with an operator remaster of recruit. Tenemos re rework al recluta. We all began with as siege players and you won't be getting just one recruit but two of them. Dos tipos de recluta. Es recluta atacante y el recluta defensor. Esto lo hemos visto en Twitter. No es que se haya filtrado, sino que se estaba hablando. Well, the biggest thing here is, yes, we've been with Recruit for some time, and the thing that they're bringing to the table is an ability to inject strategy into the lineups like you've never seen before. On top of that, Recruit... Tío, como me gusta el inglés, tío. They now have full operator status, which means they can appear in every playlist freely, just like any other operator. Additionally, you can customize them like any other operator, their uniforms, their headgear. So then what does this mean for Battle Pass? Para poder customizar uniformes y todo. Mapa. With operator remasters, if you own them and everybody owns recruit, you get these two operators for free. So when you get the battle pass, you'll be rewarded an operator voucher, which means you can turn it in for any operator you don't already have. And if you have every single operator, you can still turn it in for cold hard credits. Yeah, let those R6 credits roll, but bueno, not quite yet. Si tienes todos los personajes te darán créditos R6. Si compras el Battle Pass. Y si no, pues podrás elegir o dos personajes o te dan dos personajes. It's about the health of the game. We want to make sure that everything in the game is maintained and brought forward. This is game. We we're here to stay. We're here. Alex has said it last year on the SI. We're here for the next 10 years, and we are making sure we make that investment across the board. Eso que vos te dice no quiere decir algo, no, no es algo bueno. I'll also say this gives us an opportunity for our new operators as well, letting us give more time to their abilities, making sure they're unique, they're impactful, and also it affects their loadouts, making sure that we can give them even new weapons in the game. All right, TLC for operators. You gotta love that, right? Now, that seems like a lot, but we still have a couple more seasons to go. So let's get into season three. What can we expect? Abro. Season three will be a new operator coming from Greece. Grecia, tercer personaje. Heart, so eh, bueno, tercer personaje, temporada tres. First Greek operator into siege. That's really cool. Uh, Joshua, I feel like you're just itching to tell us more. Yeah, I, got, I have two things. One, this operator is bringing something to the table again you've never before seen in siege. Un operador que nunca hemos visto en el 6. This operator will be fielding a new weapon. Va a traer un nuevo arma. Weapon, nice. All right, with that, let's get into season four. I know it's a little bit away, but you got to tell us something. Okay, so season four, we're bringing another remaster to the game, and this one is, I guarantee you've been asking for this for a long, long time. So I'm super happy we're finally getting to it. Uh, Joshua. <laughs> you gotta tell us more than that. <laughs> we're not we're not really supposed to talk about this one because it's so far in advance, but uh this operator hails from the United States, and again, you've all been waiting for this one for a long time. Okay, uh Otro de Estados Unidos. Estados Unidos. we could see it on the roadmap, the flag, but we are here in Brazil. Bro, un so reward, no? Tell us more. Who wants to hear more? Un reward de uno para ordes, no entendido. Right. The crowd has spoken, Joshua. Yeah, going with the intimidation strategy, <laughs> very good. Okay, so to keep my job, I'm going to say something different. On a totally unrelated note, I just want to say our cosplay pardon, community pardon, pardon, is pardon, pardon, insane. Pardon. I've been incredibly inspired by the work you all have been doing. I can hear them in the crowd. And you all bring life into our characters and you bring them to real life. And you know what? Os cuento lo que es eso, ¿vale? Sí, es un opera, es un operador remasterizado de Estados Unidos. Según rework de un operador de Estados Unidos. ¿Cuántos operadores de Estados Unidos tenemos en R6 actualmente, aparte de Deimos? Of course, you can expect a new battle pass with a new theme every single season and an event to break up that middle of the season. Bueno, Battle Pass, evento. All right. Well, that's sounding pretty good, but let's dive a little deeper into player protection. Bueno, protección de jugadores. 
De momento. Okay, I want to make it very clear. Fortisios hackers. Bueno, la, quiere ser claro contra los hackers, eh, contra los hackers. Hackers have no space. Cheaters have no space in a game like C. I mean, Alex, a lot of people are excited about that. So let's talk about what else we're going to see. So cheaters have no space in Siege, but it's also about reducing the amount of cheaters as well, right? That's right. Season one, we already announced that we're introducing new technology, machine learning. Una nueva tecnología que se viene. We make bands based off of data and statistics. This will make us a lot quicker when it comes to analyzing the complete population, making sure that we identify cheaters quickly and we're getting them out of the game as soon as possible. On top of all of this too, yesterday we talked about the ranked playlist, making sure that there's new restrictions so that new players no, understand just. what they have to do in order to jump into it. But also making it tougher for cheaters Eso es una tontería. ¿Qué te demoras? ¿30 minutos en poder volver a jugar ranked? Eso es una estupidez, como pide. Eso es una estupidez, como pide. Every single season will see an update to the reputation system in the game. Sounds pretty good. I think you made it pretty clear and everyone heard cheaters are not welcomed in Siege. So how is it going to be harder for them? In season two, we'll be working on anti-toxicity first. And that is the release of the reputation system from beta. Right now, The system is in beta mode, so actual consequences aren't yet live. However, in season two, you will begin getting restrictions on the playlist that you can enter if you have a low reputation standing, meaning that you better be on your best behavior. Ooh, cheaters beware. Okay, let's talk about PC. That's right. Season two, we're also introducing something on the PC side. We're making it harder for cheaters to have access to multiple accounts so that if they are banned once, they stay banned and they can't jump into other accounts into the game. Sounding pretty good. <laughs> I want to double back to the reputation system. Bueno, <laughs> ¿qué decirte, la verdad? Es que, a ver, What are we gonna see there with that? que hablen de los chetos, so han hablado tantas veces. Console anti -cheat. It detects mouse and keyboard while you're supposed to be using controller. You ask for more punishments no. when players are detected by this, and we are delivering. Players detected by mousetrap will be penalized by the reputation system. Sí, es como que va, a, a, están mejorando lo que ya tienen. En consolas, en PC, están centrado en eso. We are going to see more. This is part one, with part two coming the next season. What we'll be doing is making sure that if you are detected by Mousetrap, you will be automatically placed into the PC matchmaking pool, so that the only players you play against are those with mouse and keyboard. If you're on console playing with a controller, that's the only person you should be playing against. Yeah, uh, you know, you don't want to have your controllers out if, uh, you know, Estar hablando you're de eso. To be o sea. So beware of Mousetrap. Let's head in to season Para PC. Te vas a pegar con gente de PC. ¿no? Eso está guay. Season will be hammering down on cheaters. Season 4 we're also making a big update. We will introduce live bans. That means as soon as a cheater is detected, even in a live match, they will be removed from that match. Oh. That match will be canceled. Va, pero es que eso no va a funcionar, bro. O sea, es que sí, está muy bien, es muy bonito, pero veremos a ver si funciona, ¿sabes? Uah, ¡Qué pereza, por Dios! Y es ok tener un banter con el otro equipo. Pero lo que no promovemos y no permitimos es el odio, el sexismo o cualquier tipo de bigotry. Así que vamos a ir en el chat de texto. 
we'll be introducing automated moderation in text chat in season four to make sure regulation de chat mejorada and safe. And we're seeing a little bit of that there as well. That sounds pretty cool. A lot covered for player protection. Let's get into what you want the main takeaways to be when we think of player protection in your nine. For us, when it comes to anti-cheat and anti-toxicity, this is a year-long effort. You'll see season after season, we're investing in four main priorities. One, it's going to be about hardening our security systems, making them more resilient, making them more robust, and that means reinforcing our two technologies. Mousetrap, our console anti-cheat. We'll be updating it every single season. And QB, our PC anti-cheat, making sure it's robust, it can handle what it needs to, and make the game a lot safer. And finally, when it comes to game exploits, we're stepping it up as well. We're growing our team and putting dedicated resources on game exploits so that they can be identified faster and they're eliminated as soon as possible. Sounds pretty good. <laughs> Now you talk about communication. <laughs> la gente ya está hasta la polla, yo creo. Where are we going to see that? We've been stepping up our communication already this year, and our promise to you is that we're communicating on this subject every two months. We don't want to go radio silent on this and make sure that you always have the information you need so you understand what's going on in the game at all times. All right, well, thank you so much for that, Alex. You know what, Joshua, I'm thinking maybe we should give Alex a little bit of a break. Covered a lot there, so let's head in to balancing. Bueno, balances, venga, vamos, vamos, vamos a balances. Vamos a balances, va. Joshua, how is balancing changing in year nine? So, we, like I said, we are dedicated to some serious meta shifts. And I want to make it very clear, Alex was very clear about our player protection. I'm going to make it very clear about this. The TDM meta is not here to stay. This is not how we intend for Siege to be played. We want the run and gun out of the game. We want to get tactical, strategic, focused, methodical play to be the center stage of everyone's ranked match, just like we're seeing up here on the stage. We're hearing a lot of players really excited for that. So how is the player perspective going to be integrated in that focus? Well, there's one more thing I'd like to mention yeah. just before I get into the player's perspective okay. on that. Because actually their perspective leads into this next point. Another big focus for balancing is reinforcing our attacker lineup. Div making that divide between our attackers and our defenders far closer. Because again, strategy, teamwork, and smart play is what should be winning your rounds, not what side of the fight you're on. Yeah, and you're right. That is, a lot of players have been bringing that up. So what else is going to be brought into what you're hearing from a player? So that's the thing. We want to be able to be far more reactive to your feedback. We've actually changed a bunch of process internally so that we can do that. So we can react faster to that feedback. So you're not left waiting months and months and months for changes to come in because that can be incredibly frustrating, especially because you're all playing the game every day. Now, let's talk about, um, you know, how the communications with players, because again, you mentioned they're very integral to the process. So how is communications with players going to be clarified? So one of the big things we'd like to do is clarify the vocabulary around the game. So when it comes to the game, we have three main updates. First and foremost is a straight up update. It's a single entity, something like you can see where we take a frag grenade away from an operator and give them flashbangs or something of the like. The second one, a little more complicated, is a system update. This is something you can see when we do, say, a weapon class update. This is our shotguns we did in year eight, or even the LMGs that are coming in year nine. Last but not least is the remaster. This is by far the most complicated balancing change we can possibly do in the game, but it is integral to the health of the game, so that we make sure that your investment in our operators carries forward for all the years to come. La verdad que esto no lo he entendido, sinceramente. Let's get into the seasons for no. balancing. Let's talk season one. I know a lot no of people have the season reveal, but if you didn't, here's a little refresher. Joshua, let's give it to them. Okay, yeah, so season one is coming out hot. There is a lot of stuff in season one, so you got to check your loadouts, everyone. Uh, you all saw the ADS and attachment adjustment, right? Because 
Bueno, van a hablar un poco de las miras, el cambio de las miras. Desaparece la 1.5, la 2014. <coughs> Ooh, sounds good. Okay, um, I want to talk about reinforcing attacker lineup because you mentioned that. Um, you know that everyone's interested in that. How is that going to look throughout year nine? Okay, so as we talk about reinforcing our attackers, it means giving them the armory they need, the tools they need to be able to take the fight that they have to do. The second side of it is going across the line over to those defenders and dealing with some powerhouses over there. So, in season one, a zombie will be receiving an update. Bueno, un pequeño nerfeo a Zami, ya lo sabemos. En este caso, los Kunai y a Zami van a poder ser destructibles con balas. Hay armas que lo van a poder destruir antes y hay otras que van a tardar más en destruirlas. Eh, esto es obvio, ¿vale? No es lo mismo una escopeta a corta distancia que una SMG. No es lo mismo, no sé, ¿sabes? Un cambio para Zvetler también. Para Solis. Solus will be receiving two updates. Season two, she'll be receiving the first update, which will make this the case. Her gadget will no longer be able to be used during prep phase. Additionally, ad additionally, the range of her gadget will be reduced, and the battery will drain faster. Now this is part one. La batería va a ser más buena. Three, and it'll bring a deeper system change. But it takes more time for that, and that's why it's in season three. No, sea, bueno, le han hecho un buffet a Solis. Operator being adjusted in season three, which is Dokabi. Dokabi. Ojo, temporada tres. I mean, I love how you just laid it all down there uh, with all the operators. It's so exciting. <coughs> there was a lot to, you know, pack in there. But we have to also talk about season four. I know it's a little bit away, but what is the balancing focus heading into the end of the year? So the biggest thing about season four is making sure we leave space and time to the react to the needs of the community. There is a lot of stuff coming online in season one. We want to make sure bueno, that we can meet the new operators and experience this all together and we move forward together. Of course, there will be multiple new updates throughout the seasons. Lots of things we didn't cover here. So you can stay tuned to all that as well. And what else should we keep in mind uh, heading into year nine for balancing? Well, fundamentally, we know where we want to take this game and we want to be the best damn tactical shooter on the planet, period. Reckless play will not be rewarded. Methodical team-based strategy will, and that is our goal. All right, well, thank you so much for that, Joshua. I'll give both of you a break now, because that all sounded really great. And you know what sounds great as well? The fact that, you know, Siege is up-leveling the competition. No, I'm not talking about SI, but a new feature that is coming to the game in year nine. For more on that, here's live content director Christopher Budget. ¿Cómo? ¿Cómo? Ah, bueno, vale, vale. Yo, yo digo, escúchame, me van a meter aquí una parada o algo, ¿sabes? With a quick match 2.0, bring the entire map roster to quick match. Standard will be getting new filtering, so you can choose between ranked all maps or only the non-ranked maps as well. Within Ranked, we're bringing exclusive cosmetics that you can earn every season. Siege Cup is a brand new time-gated tournament that happens every two weeks. Una Which copa sí, amigos. Siege Cup provides specific rewards, so make sure you grab your friends, squad up, register your team, and we all know that feeling at the end of the match when your heart is pumping and you just need to close it out. There's going to be no other feeling like the Siege Cup. Vale, esto os digo cuando va a llegar, ¿vale? Eso que ha comentado de una copa es para la temporada 3, ¿vale? Eh, torneo para 5 acumulaciones dura dos semanas, ¿vale? O sea, son diferentes torneos que veremos a ver cómo es. Pero bueno, eso es temporada 3, o sea que queda bastante tiempo.
Going to brush up on your skills there. But you know what? Let's get a little cozy and head into player comfort and long-term progression. Bah, me está dando una pereza brutal, eh. Te lo probando. Dios mío, ahora te van a meter el player confort. La madre que me parió. Si es que me voy a dormir aquí, eh. Hostia puta, tío. Ultimately, it stems from giving our players many different quality of life upgrades, making sure you have full control over your experience, and giving you more tools to take your skills to the next level. And what else does this mean for players? This also means that we are invested in rewarding players' dedication in Siege. You pour hundreds of hours into the game, and we want to return the favor. So we want to make sure that you have that long-term progression to always look forward to. Okay, with that, let's head into season one updates for player comfort and long-term progression. Uh, we already saw a bit of that in the season one reveal, but how is it really setting the tone in season one? So season one, we start immediately with the locker that I know a lot of players have been asking for. The ability bueno, no inventario, amigos, que iba para la temporada uno, ya lo vimos ayer. Donde está mucho más sectorizado todo. ¿Vale? Yeah, I love the locker. I, I like keeping organized, and I think a lot of players do too, so the locker is going to come in handy for that. But on top of the locker, we saw a big movement. Yeah, so we're going through and making sure all our systems are getting that kind of health thing that we talked about with our operators, making sure bueno, that the clunkiness no is removed rappel. and you have that real sense of flow. So we're looking at Repel, an iconic feature of Siege and that entry and exit, making sure it's super smooth and feels great. It's a game feel thing. It's very hard to describe or even see in a video, but once your hands are on it, it you'll know what we're talking about. Got to get hands on it. Uh, let's talk about gadgets. What's happening there? Okay, so we have two big things coming for the gadgets. One is improved gadget pickup. So the idea of being able to pick up a gadget once you've placed it, relocate it within the map. Number two is projectile trajectory pre-visualization. And that is the last time I'm saying that. Feísimo. It's called pre-vis. <laughs> Es una cosa que comentamos ya, eh, la previsualización de, de la utilidad que utilicemos, o sea, tú vas a poder dónde va a caer o el alcance que tiene una granada, ¿vale? Vas a poder ver una línea blanca feísima y vas a poder ver, pues eso, dónde cae, la verdad, parece de dibujos, o sea... Y eso en parte a pública. Experience game and you're comfortable with playing the game is knowing how you can improve and how you're performing. So how is season two going to help players on the front? We are el salto del drone, eso, a ver si lo entiendo. After action report. This is the system where you commend your players and understand how you performed. After that, cambiado, ¿sí? you'll see an updated screen where you can see all of your progression, all of your stats, and everything you care about in one single place, and then quickly jump into that next match. Do you have anything else to add for Season 2? Well, we're extending Previs into Season 2 as well, and we're adding it to our drones. This gives you all the control you need all to right. be able to get your drones wherever you need to get them. At the end of Is the day, it's about making sure that you can get the intel you need and drone survivability. Is it so, really? Wait, there's more. Oh. Yeah. So previs, as I said, started in season one, season two, and we're actually bringing it right into season three. And what does that mean? It means bringing it to our deployable gadgets. So deployable shield, new jammers, those sort of things. Being able to get them set the first time right. Vaya mierda. Sea puta, tú como sea eso. All right. So. A lot of us maybe go on our phone when we're waiting for our match and ranked or whatnot, but wouldn't it be nice just to jump into the shooting range? You can do that now. So in season three, you'll be able to load into the <laughs> shooting range. Le customizaciones de uno versus uno, ahora lo comentarán. Eso está guay. Additionally, it seems a bunch of you like to 1v1, so we're adding it as a preset into our custom games. That's pretty cool. I will not be one Que ya el día de hoy lo teníamos, ¿no? Pero bueno. Oye. Give me some time to brush up my skills and maybe we'll Ya lo podíamos hacer, ¿no? You mentioned rewards off the top. Are we going to see that come into play here? Absolutely. Season 3 is a big feature that we call badges. 
This is where you'll be able oh, to earn the is. achievements and challenges que guapo. and equip those badges as a badge of uh, honor mola so esto, eh? you can show them off with all of your friends. And on top of that, we're creating a new home for badges too, que which guapo, is the career page. The career page is where you can see your stats, see how your last matches went, Colectivo and customize which badges you can keep no? on your profile. That's pretty cool. Okay, uh, I gotta talk about matchmaking as we head into season four. How is matchmaking evolving? So in season four, we're introducing something that we call dynamic matchmaking. Crossplay. This is making sure we have more flexible matchmaking for Dios. players in lower <laughs> population zones or in places that, when you're playing and it's not peak uh, siege time, you're still getting a fair match. So if you're in Australia playing at like five o'clock in the morning, you're still getting a balanced and fair matchmaking experience. Making a lot of Aussies happy. <laughs> Let's talk about crossplay. What's coming in season four? Crossplay is the final update that we're bringing to the table, letting console players play with PC. Wow. Friends. It should be very important. Los de consola van a poder jugar con PC, pero los de PC no van a poder jugar con los de consola. Vale. It's very important to note that this is a one-way street. PC players will not be allowed to play with console Eso está muy matchmaking. Bien. So. Now with this set, doesn't matter what platform you're on, what console you're playing. O sea, los de consola van a poder entrar en el matchmaking de PC, pero los de PC no van a poder entrar en el matchmaking de consola. Eso mola, eso está bien hecho. Anything else to cap off player protection? When it comes to player protection, player comfort. Sorry. Player comfort. Yeah, this is really about what you care about, what the community cares about, the quality of life improvements, everything that's rewarding. Expect us to expand on this and to grow this on the roadmap as we go along in the year based on your feedback. All right, well, thank you for that, for player comfort and long-term progression. Now, for some of you, you may be looking to maybe trade in some of your items for some cold, hard R6 credits. Or maybe you're looking for some sweet throwbacks. Well, guess what? The marketplace is where you can do all of that. And to tell us more on what the marketplace will look like in year nine, here is business strategy director Mohammed Ben Hanada. El, market, el marketplace, amigos, se va a lanzar. Os lo digo yo cuando se lanza ya. Right now en la temporada 2. Marketplace is that we want to make sure that the feature is polished, functional and as secure as possible. So this means that the beta is going to be running up until we feel that the feature is up to your standard and up to our standards. So for you, this means that you can still sign in through the QR code or through our Bueno, website. no sé, eh? si se está temporada 2. Feedback in order to build this platform together. Ahora os lo digo, que lo estoy and leyendo. Sure to register for the marketplace to get in on all that cool stuff. All right, now sometimes you hear trade and you're thinking new players, but guess what? Year nine is bringing some cool things for veteran players as well. And back again to tell us about this feature is live content director Christopher Budgen. Ya hemos 38 minutos de video, no me lo puedo creer. 38 minutos de video, yo me parto los cojones. We really want to focus on following up on our promise to bring the best training tools to Siege. That's why we're really going to be focusing on all of the players, making sure they have the training tools they need to be able to execute whatever strategy they intend. We're really happy with the reception of Versus AI Playlist. And that's why we want to follow it up strong in Season 1 with five new maps, new Defender AIs, and being able to play more attackers as well. And we're not stopping there. We're bringing new content in Season 2 and Season 3 as well. On top of that, we're also delivering the AI attacking playlist. That means for the first time, you'll be able to play defense and attack in an AI match. Expect AI bueno, mientras busques partida, amigos, vas a poder entrar en el campo de entrenamiento. Con cualquier personaje. Menos mal. O sea, eso es algo eh, básico. Really and that is why we're bringing new maps in Season 1, but also Season 2 and Season 3 as well. Map knowledge isn't the only skill you need to become a champion. And while the shooting range is a great place to warm up your aim, it's not the same as navigating through maps and clearing targets. That's why we're bringing a big update to Target Drill, where you can play for over 60 minutes with targets in every room. 
We have a lot of quality of life improvements coming in this update also. You can turn on headshots only, have pre-made destruction, or even turn on a mini HUD. We're also bringing damage reporting. So as you clear a room, you can see how much damage you've taken, and then you can actually know whether or not you cleared that room efficiently or not. In season three, we're bringing the drone drill to the map training playlist. Intel is king, and we know that finding a good hiding spot could be the difference between a win and a loss. Also in season three, we have a new cover mode coming to the aiming lane within the shooting range. It's a great opportunity to test with a smaller target as the target dummy takes position behind cover. Bueno, pues in year nine, we're not just building onboarding tools, but rather the future of training to help our current players improve their skills to perform at their best. No, quería echarle un screenshot a... Quite a bit there for Eso. bedroom players as well. That's, that's pretty awesome. Yeah, and Christopher said it really well when it comes to something like target drill. We've been working with veteran players, making sure that they can clear floor after floor after floor and that they get the best practice possible before they jumped into a ranked match. And of course, this is the best time to jump into Siege as well with your friends when we bring the new versus AI online with attackers as well. Now, we are here at SI. So, I mean, it only feels right to check in to what the competitive scene of Siege will look like in year nine. For more on Siege Esports, here is Esports Director Maxime Vial. We have Associate Director Esports Live Events and Broadcast Nelson Garcia and Blast Executive Director Christina Martel. Mm, it's, mm, Vale, chao, les quiero decir. Ah, mi colega, tú me quedas bien en este. En season 2024, and reveal the revamped point system to qualify to the six invitational, which now puts more emphasis on teams' results at the major. Porque igual para la copa esa, ¿no? I'm happy to reveal one more key change. This season, we are bringing back the six invitationals last chance qualifiers. We will provide more details on their formats later this year. The first major of season 2024 will be hosted in Manchester. We're excited to host the very first major for Siege in the UK, and what better city than Manchester where we know the crowd will create an unforgettable atmosphere for the teams up on stage. In November, we will head to Montreal, home of the Rainbow Six Siege production team. Vuelven a Canada, a special place in our hearts, and we're excited to be back. After Sao Paulo this year, we will explore fresh locations in 2025. The Six Invitational will travel to the United States. Normalmente, oh, esto es lo mira, los brasileños, tú, se ha rayado, tú. It is time to spread the love to Europe. We have so many amazing local communities across Europe. So deciding where to go was not easy. But guess what? I'm happy to announce that in 2026, the Six Invitational will be hosted on Ubisoft home turf. In France. En Francia, tú. Can't wait to see you all there and make it easy. <laughs> En 2026, tú, vendrá el Siege Invitational a, a Francia, tú. 2026. Veremos a ver si el juego sigue en pie, tú. Va, la gente está rayada, eh, abucheando y todo. Hostia puta, tú. Buah, 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 está raya la peña, eh. So we're really excited to bring this year to you. Now, before we go, I can't believe the panel's coming to an end already because you all have been so great. But I have to ask. La peña ya quiere irse a la final y ya está. You want the community to be left with heading into year nine. Joshua, let's start with you. I, I think the biggest thing is that you're heard. That we are building this game together, we've committed to doing that, and we want to listen to your feedback, and it is not only welcome, but actively encouraged. So please keep giving us your feedback, because this is our collective game. And as Alex said, it's a great time to get into the game. Lots of new players are joining us, and the passion here in Brazil, oh my gosh, you will send ripples through this game for years to come. So again, thank you to everyone, and it's been amazing. Alex? I just want to echo what Josh said. I want to thank the entire community for all of the passion you've brought to the game. It inspires us. I also want to thank the team that works on Rainbow Six Siege as well. 
They pour their hearts and soul into this game, and we appreciate it. Also, I want to thank Blast for putting on the SI, hosting it in Brazil, and for all of you to show up and make it such a special moment. Year nine is an important year for us, and it sets the stage for an important milestone. At the end of year nine, we'll be moving into our 10th year of Siege. That's a huge milestone. We're already working hard on that next step for Siege. And while we can't say anything today, I will say that this brings Siege into the future bigger and better than ever. So I want to say again, thank you so much for making this. Bueno, veremos a ver si tus palabras terminan siendo verdad, amigo. Ojalá que sí. I want to thank both of you. Ojalá que sí. Si no, pues en, en palabras se quedará. Vale, chavales. Ahora sí. Eh, ahora sí, chavales. Opinión, punto de vista. Eh, voy a hablar un minuto. Eh, 46 minutos de vídeo. Me parece un año aburrido. ¿Vale? Me parece un año aburrido. Es la sensación que a mí me da. No puedo hablar mucho porque tampoco me he parado a, a ver eh, todo con detalle. Pero de primeras, la sensación que me da es un año aburrido. Es un año como el que estamos pasando. Un año sin mucho contenido, sin mucha chicha. Y veremos a ver cómo termina esto. ¿Vale? Eh, solo vamos a tener dos operadores este año. Eso es una realidad. Hemos pasado de tener dos personajes por temporada. Es decir, dos y dos, cuatro, eh, cinco, seis... 8 personajes en un año a solo tener dos. Eh, así que bueno, veremos a ver, veremos a ver, veremos a ver, veremos a ver. Con esto no estoy diciendo que vaya a ser un mal año, repito, no me he parado a ver en detalle todo. Eh, he visto las cosas y me he enterado de las cosas a la misma vez que vosotros estaba viendo esto. A mí la sensación que me da de primeras es un año muy de pereza, la verdad. Y me entristece, me entristece porque podrían hacer muchas cosas que llamasen la atención, como lo de. Eh, como lo del tema del. De, de. Joder, se me olvida el nombre. De los jugadores de PC con los jugadores de consola, el, el, el crossplay, ¿no? Creo que es. Pero llega para la temporada 4. Llevamos esperando eso un montón de tiempo. Entonces, las cosas que realmente importan no están llegando o llegan muy tarde. Y sinceramente, eh, creo que, que eso, que nos espera un año con poco contenido. Y espérate que no atrasen las cosas importantes. Porque las cosas que a nosotros más importantes y necesarias para el juego creemos que son, son las cosas que más trabajo llevan. Esto es una realidad. Y no es la primera vez que atrasan algo. Como lo del tema del crossplay, por ejemplo. Entonces, pues nada. Veremos a ver qué termina pasando. Veremos a ver qué ocurre. No voy a hacer más vídeos hoy. Eh, analizando esto, lo haré a lo largo de la semana tranquilamente, me ha dado una pereza brutal y ponerme ahora no me apetece, me voy a ir a eh, jugarme unas partidas al CS, a cenar y a dormir. Eh, poco más que deciros, chavales, espero que os haya gustado el vídeo, dejadme aquí abajo en los comentarios qué pensáis, qué opináis y nos vemos en la próxima. Chao, chao, adiós, adiós.